Hello everyone, it's Ryan again at Dark Winter Moon in Boston, and today we're going to talk about how to create your very own witch's bottle. Um, for those of you that don't know, a witch's bottle is a form of sympathetic magic that you can use to protect yourself and your space. Um, so um, I'm going to go through how to create one and a few of the details about uh, what makes it work magically. Um, so let's get started. All right, so here I have my little setup um, of things I'm going to need to make a witch's bottle. Um, I've set up a little makeshift altar. Um, so the most important thing is the actual bottle. So I prefer to use a bottle that is darker um, and is, a, and you know, usually colored glass will do. Um, and... Um, so one reason for that is, is the idea of a witch's bottle is to create um, kind of a misdirect for any negative energy or magic that's sent against you. And so in, in some ways, this bottle is like um, a reverse voodoo doll or um, a poppet. Um, it's designed to capture and disperse any negative energy or magic sent your way. And so having it in dark glass helps to do that. It helps to contain it. Um, and so the, the second important thing that I like to put in my witch's bottle um, is some blessed water. Um, and if you're new to the craft and haven't ever created your own uh, uh, water, I'm going to link a video here called Creating Your Own S uh, Sacred Spring that tells how to do that. And so um, the other thing you're going to need is a candle. Um, I like to use a black or red candle for the same reasons um, that I like a, a colored glass or a darker colored glass is because um, black tends to absorb negativity. It tends to absorb energy. Um, preferably, um, I like to use a candle that has already been used in magic but is no longer going to be used for that magic because it has a charge to it. Um, and it also represents you, especially if you have um, done... Um, if you're the one that had cast the spell for that, uh, using that candle. Um, I am completely out of candle stubs, so I went ahead and blessed a new candle. Um, and if you need information on how to do that, I'll also link a video about how to bless and dress your candle. Um, and so also to bless and dress your candle, you'll need some type of essential oil. Um, I chose cedar wood. Um, that seemed very appropriate. I'm not sure why it was completely intuitive, but feel free to use whatever essential oil that uh, resonates with you if you are indeed blessing your candle, uh, a, a new candle for this spell. Um, so the other things that I've chosen are um, sharp things, basically. So um, that helps to entrap the negative energy. It helps to cut it up and kind of helps disperse it. Um, and we're going to put these in the bottle. So I chose some rusty nails and some old pins. Um, I also chose some broken glass. Um, so um, if you don't have broken glass around, you can easily make your own. Uh, my favorite method of doing this is take a bottle that you don't need, uh, wrap it in a towel that you don't need, and take a hammer and uh, bust it up in that. And that way you're not worried about getting glass everywhere or in your eyes or on you. Um, you know, the caveat, be very careful with broken glass, be very delicate with it, because you are going to have to handle it. Um, and then the other thing I've chosen are some little quartz points um, for this spell. And these have been sitting outside um, near my ritual space and have been being charged by earth, wind, fire, um, and all the elements, and water. Um, the great thing about points is that they are also sharp, so they do the same things as the other two. Quartz, though, helps add energy and power to uh, your witch bottle um, and helps keep it sustained um, so that it's it's continuing to hold and draw in that negative energy. Um, the one other thing that you're going to need for your witch's bottle is some sort of bodily fluid, whether it's saliva, urine, um, semen, and, and um, if you're able to, uh, menstrual blood also works, uh, if you're able to produce it, um, and or saliva. 
So whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and the reason you use a bodily fluid is because um, you, again, are wanting to misdirect any negativity or negative magic that's sent at you into the witch's bottle. And so by putting in your own bodily fluids, you are, um, you are fooling the magic or negative energy into thinking the bottle is you and then entrapping it. So in this case, I'm gonna use saliva for our purposes. So you just spit in the bottle, it's super easy. And then you take your next item. I'm just gonna start with the nails and pins. Again, be careful. Um, something I forgot to mention is you can also use old and rusty uh, razor blades. Um, basically anything sharp. I think it being rusty and old makes it more powerful. Um, and then the glass. Again, be careful uh, with the sharpness um, of glass. Um, I'm going to be very careful with that. Um, when I was breaking this glass up, it was also helpful to measure each piece to make sure it would actually fit in the bottle. Because I've definitely run into... Um, into that issue before when making a uh, witch's bottle, when I, I had broken up some glass and I just didn't have, um, and sometimes it does get stuck. Um, it just wouldn't fit in there. Oh, lovely. Get this and push it down. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to mention, I don't remember if I mentioned this, but blood is perfectly acceptable to put in your witch's bottle. Um, in my opinion, it makes it even more powerful because blood is such a powerful life force energy. Um, and if you do happen to cut yourself while you're doing this, my opinion is perhaps it was meant to have blood in it or you needed extra protection of your own blood in there. But that is totally up to you and your own intuition. And then finally, our crystals. I chose five, I don't know why. Oh, I hope they all fit. I didn't check the crystals. I don't think this one will. That's all right. I might put that one on the very top on the outside. A little stray piece of glass stuck in there. All right, and then the next thing you want to do is seal your bottle by dripping wax on it. So for this part, I've just gotten an old envelope so that I don't get wax everywhere. It's up to you. I mean, this is an altar cloth, so it probably already has wax on it anyway. Um, but just take your candle. And of course, light it. And then the easiest way to do this, I found, is to start by turning it on its side. If you can see it that way. But, and you just want to make sure that you really get all the cracks sealed. So I like to first start with the actual, um, let me make sure the lid's tight enough on there. Um, the actual crack that's there, just like the roll of the bottle. And you can see how this gets pretty messy. Then once it's sealed like that, you can start dripping the wax over the top. Another method is that you could also leave the candle to burn on top of the bottle. Let it burn all the way down. And as it does, it'll melt down the sides. You can also make a pool like this on top and just let it drip down the sides as it does. And I'll help further seal it for you. And so now I feel pretty good about uh, how well it's sealed, but I'm gonna let the candle burn down all the way um, and let it finish covering it with wax. And once the, um, 
once you set the candle, you can dedicate this uh, to a deity if you follow a deity or whichever powers are uh, in your place um, or that you connect with. Uh, one option is to ask for the help of the genius loci, um, the spirit of place, um, to uh, help you weave this into the place for your own protection and for them to charge and help and protect it. So I, I might say something like, Hail the powers that be, guardians and spirits of this place, blessed deities and powers that watch over and protect me, I ask thee to take this witch's bottle, and as this candle burns, may it be sealed as a representation of me so that any negativity that is sent my way, any darkness, is captured instead in this bottle instead of reaching me. Thank you and hail, and so mote it be. And as this candle burns, once it is finished, this spell will be sealed. So mote it be. And then let the candle burn down. And once it has, um, depending on what your living arrangement is, you can either put it in um, your basement or under your house. Or um, if you live with others and you're wanting this protection just for yourself, um, then uh, you can just put it in your closet or under your bed or in some other dark place uh, for your protection. And that pretty much does it. Well, as always, thank you all for joining me. I hope this video has been valuable to you and that it has um, added something to your knowledge and practice. And um, feel free to comment or uh, ask me questions. I'd be happy to answer them. And as always, have a wonderful weekend and blessed be.